Today we will be taking a look at the construction after the arena floor flooding. Plus we will be taking a look at the teacher's point of view of cell phone use in the classroom. In addition, we'll be taking a look at student drug use. These stories and many more coming up on the Airedale. Directly from the Alma High School News Studio, covering news and sports from where it matters. You're watching the Airedale. Welcome to the Airedale. I am Del Combs. Today we will be taking a look at the arena floor progress. I talked with Mr. Reeves on how construction of our arena has impacted our students. That construction has displaced athletes and it originally had displaced some classrooms but it hasn't. Uh, once school started they were back in, in their normal classes but the construction, the noise going on down there has an impact on those classes. Uh, but it, the biggest thing is the displacement of, of the athletes. And, and the athletic programs that would go on there uh, from starting from the very start of the day in the morning when middle school athletics is going on here when you're talking about um, volleyball and everything that's going on here uh, throughout the course of our day that's been the biggest thing for us is being able to move uh, the fall sport that would go on in there right now the volleyball program move it around which then impacts basketball practices that happen right now and any other sports uh, so those have been the biggest part, making sure the logistics is taken care of and everybody understands where they're supposed to be. I also talked with Sports Floor Construction on how the construction of our arena has been going so far. It's a, it's a long process with tearing out the floor. You know, you have to open up the floor, tear it out and dispose of all the wood. Then you have, you know, to come in, lay your plastic down your subfloor, then lay out all your wood. And with having to remove all the bleachers and everything, it, it, it puts a lot of work into it. I mean, uh, the only complication we have is with our part when we're sanding is moving all the bleachers off the wall, sanding behind them. Then we got to get our seal down. But other than that, I mean, everything's going pretty smooth. Covering the arena floor flood from Airwaves Media, I'm Shelby Bishop. Thank you, Shelby. Next, we'll be taking an inside look on how cell phones are used in the classroom. Are phones in school becoming a problem? I'm here to find out. Um, whenever I am teaching my kids, my goal is to prepare them for the real world. Um, and in the real world, your boss doesn't take your cell phone um, just because you have it sitting on your desk. Um, so, But I'm just really big on preparing my kids to be in the real world. Um, and part of that is learning when it's appropriate and when it's not appropriate. When phones are at school, they can become a distraction, but most teachers believe that they can be a helpful tool. Phones in school, they're a necessary item if used correctly. It's like anything else, if they're used for the wrong reasons, they're going to be abused. But used for the right reasons, they're a very useful tool. It's the most significant invention in the last ever because they can do so much these days. I'm Madison Law signing out with Airwaves Media. Thank you Madison. Construction has become a daily norm for patrons of Alma High School. Join us as we take a look at the construction just north of Alma High. There is a lot of construction going on here throughout Alma. This has caused problems for traffic going to and from the high school. There are times whenever you're needing to get somewhere and you make a right hand turn and you see that that street is blocked now and it is a detour and so that adds a little bit of time. It's not a bunch but it adds a little bit of time. Not to mention driving on the gravel and the dirt roads that they have there. Um, you guys are all old enough to have vehicles and know that uh, a rock between pavement and a rubber tire is not a good thing. It can cause tires to go flat or to, to cause blowouts. So you have to be very careful and hope that people drive the speed limit or drive safely over those because of rocks that will fly up on other vehicles. The construction has not only caused traffic problems, but interesting things from the past has been uncovered in the progress. It, uh, it, it keeps us really, uh, keeps us busy. Um, you know, there's always something going on with the construction and, uh, you know, we have found uh, during the course of this construction, we found fuel tanks that we did not know that was still in the, in the ground. Um, it started with two. It ended up being six total. 
Um, the problem with that is, is that there was still fuel in some of those tanks. Uh, so there was some contamination with the ground. So we actually had to uh, remove some contaminated dirt and fill it back in with other dirt. And, um, you know, we, we had a, um, a, a water main uh, that got broke. Uh, and then we were having to relocate that water main. So uh, that, that delayed a project. And it's running behind now, talking about over on Column Lane. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a daily reminder. Every day there's something new with that project. We, we um, are hoping that they'll be finished soon. Thank you, Austin. Now we pass it over to Shelby Bishop for more of the best news coverage in the state, only on the Airedale. Thanks, Dale. Now we're going to take a look at ethics in school and why having good ethics makes a positive impact on our community. Here at AHS, we have a little under 1,200 students, and we seem to have good classroom behavior, but sometimes classroom behavior can get out of hand. At the high school, it's easier for students to understand that they have something that they're working for, because you understand that every class you take is a credit towards graduation, which is a credit towards whatever you're wanting to do next in your life uh, to prepare for that. So I, I really think it, I've been very pleased with the behavior in the classroom for the most part. Classroom behavior is really good right now, yet those who do cause issues can find themselves in different forms of trouble, including lunch detention or suspension. Of all the years I've been in education and all the years I've been in Alma High School, I think the behavior, the overall atmosphere of Alma High School is the best I've ever seen. Uh, behavior uh, seems to be really positive, attitudes are good, it's just a, it's a good, good environment. Uh, I hope it stays that way. If good classroom behavior is maintained, it will lead to a good year for you as a student. Many thanks to Dylan. Now follow along as we take a look at drug use and how it has affected our schools in a major way. Here at Alma High School, we have a plethora of activities that students can participate in, but it is a requirement for those students to perform in a random mandatory drug test. Um, I think it, it's really used to make sure that uh, kids are making the right decisions on and off the field. Um, and it, it's really to make sure that their priorities are in line. Um, we're trying to raise men of, of great character um, and, and great values, and we just, anything that is, uh, would make them fail that drug test um, just proves that their, their priorities are not in line um, and they're not, their interests are not um, best for the team. So that's kind of my thought process behind the mandatory drug testing. It's great that our coaches understand that it's good for our players to stay clean to perform better. And now we go to an ex-football player and his thoughts on the mandatory drug test. I guess it's a good way to keep them from doing drugs. It's, I mean, they can, you don't know what their past is, you don't know why they do drugs. I mean, there's not really an excuse to do it, but, you know. We really don't know the background of some students, which could lead to bad decisions and even drugs. But it is also good to know that our activity leaders are holding our students to a higher standard to help them become better people of society. Much appreciated, Derek. Now let's pass it over to Gene Alexander for more news coverage where it matters, only on The Airedale. We cover the sports, the events, and the news. Finding a way from the media room to the public. Hard work and precision is what we strive to capture. Capturing events in our community for all to see. We are Airways Media. Thanks, Shelby. Now let's take a sneak peek at the incredible opportunities at the DECA program. DECA stands for Distributed Education Club of America. It teaches people about businesses and marketing. To go into the more detail about DECA, we have a few kids explaining what DECA is about. DECA is an amazing organization where we do a lot of great things, uh, not only for us in building resumes, but for our community, such as... Traveling, networking, working with others, and earning scholarships. Uh, there are many opportunities um, in DECA, whether it's to travel to state competitions or just in general to give back to your community. We do things for the children's hospital, um, like do fundraisers to receive crayons and coloring books to give back to the children. We also do fire and safety day. DECA is very active in the community and in the schools helping younger students with safety and marketing. Go to 
Hartfield Primary School and we teach younger kids about the safety and priorities of understanding the fire drill and evacuating the building. Um, we also run some 5Ks, which... Such as the uh, Seget, the Seget Milk and the Jack's Donner Run. Um, those also just help to raise awareness and money for the causes that we're running for. Heirlooms is DECA operated in open in the promenade of the high school from 745 to 1245. DECA also runs our school shop called Heirlooms and DECA members work there for community service hours and credit inside and outside of class. Um, it's just another way to gain volunteer hours and stuff. Day competition is also optional. We do a competition or two every year and our main one is always in Little Rock but this year be in Nashville, Tennessee. And that's our international, where groups and clubs from all over the world come. As you can see, DECA is beneficial to anyone interested in marketing. With Airwaves Media, this is Shane Lace, Taz Tripp, and Noah McClanahan. Here in Elma High School, we see that having young love isn't all that pretty. At AHS, we all think we found the one, but did we really now? When we question ourselves, I hope we'll stay together, or does he or she make me happy? Well, we asked a few people at AHS what they thought of teen dating violence. Violence, like, um, I feel like it's a problem um, that some of our teenagers definitely face. Um, it, it can be male violence. Typically, male violence against females is what we think of, but it, that's not always the case. Sometimes we'll have females who are violent toward males. Um, but the biggest thing that I think is important for teenagers to know and understand is that they have to have the confidence to get out of those relationships when they start seeing warning signs. Most students at Alma High School know how teen dating violence happens. Either they've been in a relationship like that or they've seen their friends suffer through one. You don't think it could happen at our school? I'll be fine, but the truth is that the most beautiful relationship can turn out to be the most horrible and they suffer quietly. They can play nice, but in all, in all reality, when it is just them, the pain and suffering begins. Um, sometimes that's the hardest thing for us as counselors when we're working with them is to convince them that this is not healthy. You know, they're, when you see unhealthy things or when their friends notice unhealthy things and try to convince them, it's really hard for them um, to get out of that because they think they love that person or that they won't do it again. Um, but it, it, most of the time when those warning signs are there, then it, it only progresses and gets worse. A lot of times it's from things I feel like they've been exposed to when they were younger and sometimes they come from an um, environment at home that where there are unhealthy relationships and so they learn from that and they don't really know that what they're doing is bad on, on both ends, the, the abuser and the person who's been abused because the relationships they've seen maybe are kind of broken. As we talk about teen dating violence, we are moving on to bullying. Most people really don't care about it, but in reality, people really do suffer and go through it now. I think it's very sad. I mean, I think that's why schools have really um, put in lots of programs now to deal with bullying because there are so many kids being affected these days. Yes, I think that you should be looking for warning signs in your friends and people that you talk to. And I think kids do a really good job these days of doing that because I'll have lots of students come to me and say, um, you know, I need to talk to you about my friend, here's kind of what's going on, and I really feel like they need help with this situation. Reporting for Airways Media, it's Kirsten Goss and Gemini Shong. For our next story, we'll discuss how your behavior in class can affect your success in school. Now to Stephen Miller for more on that story. Well, I think our overall ethics of the students in this school are great because they're representative of our community. This is a good place to live, a good place to grow up. And here's what Mr. Reeves thinks about our ethics and behavior. We want them to carry themselves in a way that um, later in life, the same traits will help make them successful. As you can see, Mr. Reeves feels good about our ethics and behavior. Woman. Every day they wake up, it's not like they woke up in a new world. They kind of remember, this is what I did yesterday, this is what I got in trouble for, or this is what was successful. I can repeat that pattern, not repeat that pattern. So it's a lot easier to reason with those students. So far, ethics and behavior are going good. Stephen Miller from Airwaves Media, signing out. Now to Shelby Bishop for our Airedale Sports coverage. from the studios of Alma High School.
the leader in high school sports coverage. We bring you Airwave Sports. Football is an extremely popular sport this time of year. Our Alma Airedales are preparing non-stop for this football season. Bobby Taylor has more information on this story. There's a lot of work in coming in more than once a week to get prepared for a game. I think the main thing is we've, uh, we've prepared their, um, their mind with how they can mentally prepare for the game. Um, we've prepared them physically um, and we've prepared them um, conditionally. We, uh, we condition quite a bit and they're ready to go. They're in shape and they're ready for the season. There are no tricks to get ready for a game, but it takes a lot of hitting. Um, I think I have prepared myself by coming in two to three times a week and showing up early, staying late, putting in that extra work. Some tricks. Um, we're, gonna, we're not going to do a lot of tricks. We're, uh, we're going to keep it pretty basic. We're going to line up. We're going to get lined up. We're going to play sound, fundamental football, and uh, we're going to hit them. We're going to hit them in the mouth every single play. We're going we're gonna to enjoy doing that, um, and that's what, that's what I try to train my guys. They love being physical. We're going to be the most physical defense out there every single game. There are a lot of great sports at AHS, but one of the biggest sports is football. There's a lot of work in coming in more than once a week to get prepared for a game. Offense and defense competes every day, and it's just another grind. I mean, you just got to stay on top to win every day. It's just another grind when it comes to football. Watch it as a kid and just grow up watching it and just, you just want it. Me and my players grew up watching AHS at football as a kid, but now playing it, they want it. Not everyone can do football because it pushes you a lot. For Aries Media, this is Bobby Taylor. Thanks, Bobby. The Airedale volleyball team has been fired up this season. Jonathan Morgan has a better insight on the story. Alma has a wide variety of sports, from something as active as football to something as casual as bowling. One sport often not recognized is volleyball. The beginning of the volleyball season can be filled with many challenges as new players come in. One of the biggest challenges would definitely be learning to work with new players and being a real team because I mean when you get new players on the court you have to adapt to their tendencies and make it work with your own because volleyball is nothing without teamwork and that's one of the biggest challenges is definitely making the court a place where all the players can be accepted because if, even if one person is left out then it's not a team so you have to make sure you make an environment that accepts all the players where there's a really good flow. One of the fundamentals of volleyball is teamwork. I think teamwork is really important because if you don't work together as a team, then there's no way that it's going to be fluid on the court. And if you're not friends with everyone on the team, then you're not going to have good chemistry and you're not going to be able to click and really get the points that you need to get. And so, yeah. You don't have a team without teamwork and it's just, I mean, that's, that's the glue, that's what, that's what volleyball is about. You can't win a game without everyone helping each other on the court, and that is both, I mean, skill-wise, but also just mentally. I mean, everyone's got to stay positive and keep encouraging each other because that's, I mean, there's so many ups and downs in volleyball. It's such a, such a momentum game. The volleyball team gets to strengthen each other through volleyball camps and team activities and become closer not only as teammates, but as friends. Just practices, spending time with them. Um, we had a lot of summer practices, a lot of summer camps, a lot of summer tournaments. Um, just spending time with these girls. We had a couple overnight things. Um, we just got to spend a lot of time with each other and grow closer as teammates and then also as friends. Third year head coach Kathy Jones has always had a passion to work with kids and be a volleyball coach and her background of volleyball has helped. I've always wanted to be a volleyball coach. I, I always knew I wanted to work with kids and with my love of volleyball, which I've, I mean, I've just lived and breathed volleyball my whole life. So um, it, there's never been a question that that's what I wanted to do. I played high school volleyball. I actually started when I was in seventh grade and played year round, so I played um, school ball and then club ball and sand. I grew up in California, so I played sand volleyball in the summer. And um, I played through high school and then I played, I played college volleyball um, at Henderson State University. Some of the players have personal goals and even the coach had a goal for the whole team. For 
myself, it would probably be just to enjoy it. I know my sophomore and junior year, I was really obsessed with winning. I wanted to have so many stats. I wanted to have so many kills or so many just anything. But now I'm at the point where I want to enjoy my last season. I want to have fun with my friends and my teammates that I've gotten to know over the past three years. And I don't want to be stressed out about it because I want this to be my escape from school, home, work, everything. This is my happy place. So I definitely just want to have fun this last year. Uh, this volleyball season, I just want to become better as a setter, a hitter, whatever. I get to play and also grow stronger with the girls and just have fun, have fun playing with them. Uh, me personally, I want to be able to pass every serve that comes to me and make it a three, a three meaning a perfect pass. Stay positive through ups and downs and um, I mean just continue to encourage each other always. Some of the players set personal goals to enjoy the game, strengthen their roles, or better their personal stats. Even the coach has a goal for the players to stay positive and encourage each other. The Air Dolls are starting their season with a goal to enjoy the game and strengthen their team. Volleyball is not only a game of individual skill, but of the skill of the team. This year, the team hopes to enjoy the game and strengthen as a team. From Airways Media, I'm Jonathan Morgan. Thanks for watching the number one high school newscast in the state. Only, Only on, on The Airdale. Airdale.